Hey folks, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Thursday, November 30, 2017. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. And the runaway bull market continues. The S&P 500 was up another 21 points today. The spiders were up $1.61 or, or six-tenths of 1%. And it's just a runaway bull market. There's no two ways about it. We will obviously have some kind of a top put in somewhere along the line. But that's nothing we need to be concerned with right now. All we need to know is that as long as the market remains comfortably above these moving averages and the moving averages continue to rise higher and they continue to, to trend parallel to each other or even widen as they are over here between the 50 and the 100 period moving average. As you can see, it's actually starting to get wider. That is a sign that the market is getting stronger. Parallel is a strong market. Getting wider is even a stronger market yet. Now we find ourselves again on the daily chart getting long in the tooth, getting stretched away from home base. What's home base? The 20 period moving average. The market isn't going to get too far from home base without either eating some time off the clock by going sideways and letting the 20 period moving average rise up into price or the price will come down toward the 20 period moving average. One of those two things is likely to happen sooner than later. Here's the hourly chart or the 60 minute chart and last night we discussed the possibility that if the market was to decline it would likely find support around that 261 area. Well, the opposite thing happens. So therefore, the energy that was to be released on the downside actually got flipped over and was released on the upside. What we talked about last night was if the market got above and began closing hourly above the high of yesterday's this red candle high or this candle high, pardon me, at 1030 in the morning, that hourly candle, the high was 263.63. If we began getting above and closing above hourly that level, then the market was going in the other direction and forget the downside. Well, guess what? The market opened above that level, which was the telltale sign immediately on the gap higher that the market was going in the other direction. You didn't have to be a genius to see that. When we gapped higher this morning, it was pretty obvious and evident that the raging bull market continues and it's not a wise decision for anybody regardless I was looking to buy a pullback I wasn't looking to short the market right it's not a good idea to get in front of this freight train on the short side until and unless we break certain levels let's discuss that for a second back on the daily chart there's two important levels in my opinion right now on the chart as it relates to the daily chart that is the 260 0.66 area or the low of this green candle that's going to be the first warning sign if we close below the last breakout candle that we had a couple of days ago the second warning signal would be if we closed below the 20 period moving average we're nowhere near there right now so we don't have to worry about it but those are the only areas right now where I see trouble with this market even if we began to consolidate for a while and go back and forth eating some time off the clock, allowing price to come back toward home base, the likely scenario is that for now, the 260.66 or in and around that area or somewhere in the vicinity of this green candle low right here would be supportive to the market. What do we always say? Markets like to come back and test former breakout and former breakdown areas and this breakout from the other day on Tuesday is a pretty good candidate for if the market were to decline a little bit they would want to come back and retest the former breakout area that happens to be right around that 260.66 give or take we talk about volume and I want to talk about volume in the context of today's volume and the fact that we had about 125 million shares against an average 90-day volume or an average volume over a 90-day period of time of 62 million shares in the spider. Now, that's good volume, and it tells you that there was some institutional participation behind the market today. However, what's interesting is at highs and lows on charts, when you see heavy volume, and I'm not going to classify 
125 million shares in the big scheme of things, right? Of late, it is heavy volume. But in the big scheme of things, I'm not going to yet classify this as exhaustion volume. So for example, if we see heavy, heavy volume at a high or a low on a chart, that can be determined or can be related to an exhaustion move. Now, was today an exhaustion move? It's possible. I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just not sold that 125 million shares is exhaustion volume. I wouldn't put that in the exhaustion camp. I would have to see it over 200 million, at least in my book and from my experience, to classify it as exhaustion volume. However, based on the fact that we were double the normal volume, it potentially could be exhaustion volume today. We'll see. Again, it could be a buy the rumor and sell the news as it relates to the tax bill that's being voted on. I believe now the vote is going to take place in the morning in the Senate. Now, who knows what the outcome is going to be? I have to believe if they're bringing a vote to the floor that they're going to pass the vote. But it still could be a buy the rumor, and we've been buying the rumor all this week, and then it could be a sell the news event tomorrow or into next week that is possible and then we would be able to say after the fact of course that today may have been exhaustion type volume on this particular move now, i'm not saying it's it's going to be uh, a correction that lasts for six months or anything like that not that kind of exhaustion move on the daily chart when we see an exhaustion move it could be just for a week or two that's it it certainly could be longer term, but it may only be just for a few days, and maybe that's the reason why it's not tremendous volume, but on a short-term basis for a few days, it could be determined of an exhaustion move. Let's look around the markets for some more evidence and see what we find. We look at the IWM, which, as you know, is my favorite leading indicator of the markets, and what we find is a market that really wasn't up in concert with the other markets. You had the Dow up. 331 points today. The S&P cash index up 21 points. The Nasdaq composite up three quarters of a percent at about 50 points. And you had the IWM, which is generally leading the market higher, leading the market lower, ended up finishing the day up 23 cents or about 15 tenths of 1%. We got above yesterday's high, which is classified as a doji candle. But we didn't close above yesterday's high, and we certainly didn't close anywhere near the highs of today. In fact, we closed poorly on the IWM. When you look at the hourly chart, we gapped up yesterday, and I guess on the IWM, and I think we talked about this last night, you know, you could take this as a bullish pattern, and we played it out to the upside today, and then you can flip it around and say that today, in the second candle of the day, we put in a tail candle and the market basically trended sideways to lower all day long. Now, you could still make a case this is one long bullish pattern above all the moving averages and we can still have another move higher. That's certainly a possibility. But you can also make the case that the market was failing because when you look at the... I didn't mean to do that. I want to go back to the daily chart. And when you look at the daily chart, you can say the IWM didn't really participate with the other broad market indexes today and was struggling. And if the IWM was struggling, is that the market's way of trying to tell us something? Is it a signal that the market is not as strong as people would like you to believe? I think that's a possibility. I think the volume today could potentially be at least short-term exhaustion from the spider chart we just looked at. I don't like the IWM activity today. I think that's a signal of weakness, a sign of weakness, but it's a very small signal. It's a very small sign, and it may be nothing at that. Why do I say that? Well, first we'll look at the transports, then I'll go back to something else. So there are some contradictions out here. There's some conflicting information. There continues to be some divergences out here, but look at the transports. This again, another tremendous move in the transports, up 2%, giving us the opposite opinion from the IWM. So the IWM didn't participate on the upside like all the other markets today, but the transports sure did. And the transports are my second favorite leading indicator of the markets, as you know. We had three very, very strong days in the transports. 
when you get three strong up days like this in any market on any chart, it's generally going to be at least a pause, if not a pullback from this area. We made new highs. We blew past the old highs. You know, we, we hit them yesterday, surpassed them intraday, didn't close above the highs. And today, the market or the transports continue to power forward up another 200 points. This is in the realm of silly at this point. And when I say silly, it's mainly because not that we were up three days in a row, but to the magnitude in this particular index that we were up the last two days is a little bit of a freight train, a little bit of a runaway freight train. I mean, look where we are as it relates to the 20 period moving average, which I like to call home base. That comes in at 96.59, 96.60. That's where home base is. We're at 10,275. The market's going to have to pull back and come back down to planet Earth at some point. I'm not saying we can't go higher. I'm not saying we're not in a bull market. We are in a bull market. But there comes a point in which we get into the silly season. And right here in the transports, we're in that silly season where they're going to have to consolidate at a bare minimum and eat some time off the clock and let the moving averages catch up to price or let price come back to the moving averages. So I would look for at least some kind of a sideways movement for the next several days, even a pullback in the cards for the transports. That's my take in the transports. Now here's something else that's extremely interesting. We haven't looked at the VIX in a while. I've been watching it, but I haven't talked about it in these videos in a little while. And what happened over the last several days is the VIX has been moving up with the market, which is an anomaly in and of itself. Now, we put the line on the chart at 886. It wasn't a number of any particular importance. I was just suggesting that if we got down to where this double bottom was down here that came in at 884, okay, so I was just putting this line around that double bottom area that it was an opportunity because the VIX never stays below 10, let alone 9, for very long. We've talked about that time and time again. I've mentioned that dozens, if not hundreds of times. And here we have it. You see a, a bottoming tail in the VIX, piercing through the old low at 884, making a low in this candle on the 24th of November of $8.56 and taking off to the upside. Now, the VIX was up. In fact, it finished up almost 5.5% today, but the VIX was up about 11% today while the market was rallying. Now, you can make a case that it was just a bunch of traders and investors buying protection because they don't believe the rally, or it could be something else. We need more evidence. We need more time and more clarity because the market's always right. Whether the VIX comes back down because the market's rising, that's fine. Or the market comes back down and the VIX was a signal that the market was going to come back down and people were buying the VIX and pushing the price of the VIX higher before the market actually made a turn. One of those two things is true and we'll need more evidence and more time and another day or two to figure out which one. But the market is always right one way or the other. So either the VIX will come down and catch up because the market is higher, meaning catch up to the reality that the market is going to continue higher, or the stock market will come down and the VIX was the signal or the tip-off that the market was likely going to pull back. Where did we find resistance today on the VIX? Right around the top of a big breakdown candle and that's the way the market works that's right out of my course markets love to test the highs of big breakdown candles and the lows of breakout candles we talked about that with the spider here it is again with the vix you saw it today we tested the high of that breakdown candle and the market was rejected and the vix pulled back but closed above the 200 period moving average Going over to the gold market, broke down again today in gold, so the pressure is to the downside, and we're holding the 200 period moving average, at least for the time being. Now, you know that we've consolidated along this 200 period moving average for quite a while. So the likelihood is that this bearish pattern, this is a bearish pattern, the likelihood is, is that this is going to break to the downside. That's the probabilities. The probabilities are that if it does, and the probabilities say that it should, then 1248 to 1250 is in the cards. 
This line has been on the chart, this trend line has been on the chart for quite some time as we began making this bearish pattern. But we've been going back and forth and the gold market has been driving traders crazy for several weeks going back and forth, up and down, not showing signs of a breakout or a breakdown one way or the other. It's still not clear, therefore there's really no trade in here. There's nothing telling us there's a high probability trade on one side or the other of the gold market. Now, that will change if we actually do break down and come in to test the 1248-1250 level. That may in and of itself produce a high probability trade on the downside, pardon me, the upside, but there's still a lot of chart support in this area here. Now, the longer we hover over this, the less important this becomes. We've hovered over it quite a bit. So I'm not suggesting that there's a trade in here. I'm saying that we could potentially find support here, but it's not a tradable area of support. This would be a tradable area of support depending on how we got there and what price did when it gets there. We know the signals of a trend change. We just have to see how price comes into that area. That may produce a high probability trade. Another down day for silver. And last night we talked about the important level for silver was this area right here. This pivot low. And you can see the market fighting that pivot low. I said that if we got down there, it would be good at least for an intraday bounce, if nothing else. When we go over and look at the 10 minute chart, you can see what happened. Here's the actual intraday and here's the 16444. You can see the gap lower today and then all of a sudden, this is just the pit session. That's why I switched this over just to the pit session rather than the 24 hour clock. And you can see we came right into that level. The 16 spot 444 was that pivot low. We traded around that pivot low in a bearish pattern and then broke down further and then we actually made a bounce and you can see here now we're making a bullish pattern right above that level. So what is once support becomes resistance, what is once resistance becomes support, that's the way the market works and from a short term basis we're now consolidating in a bullish fashion above that level. Maybe that was a low we put in, maybe it wasn't, we'll have to find out more evidence tomorrow. But what we do know is that pivot low was certainly important to the market. As you can see here, the market fights to close the day. The official close of the day hasn't happened yet, but the market is certainly fighting to close above this pivot low. That's the market's way of telling us by the fact that there is a pivot low and what it's doing here to fight to close above the pivot low. That's the market's way of telling us that that price level is important crude oil not much happened in crude oil we did have an intraday range today of slightly more than a dollar and that is somewhat typical for crude oil in and around that dollar range obviously we have smaller days or narrower ranging days and we have larger days but if you took the average of all the days you would say that a lot of days the market has a range of around a dollar, dollar and a quarter, maybe slightly less, maybe slightly more, but that's typical for crude oil. We came in again on the low today to test the 20 period moving average and we had a nice rally off that level. As long as the market holds above the 20 period moving average, it's still bullish. If we were to close below that level, the same thing applies that we talked about last night, which is your next area of support is down here. If that doesn't hold, you have the 50, and that'll continue to slope up into price as we go along. So as the 50 period moving average slopes up into this area, that becomes more of a support reason. And then if those areas or that area didn't hold, then you come all the way down here. But that's a far cry from where we are now. Right now, as long as we stay above the 20 period moving average on the daily chart, this is a bullish market and we're just working off some of the short term overbought condition, nothing more, nothing less. Over to the bond chart. Now the bond market made an interesting move today. We had a spike down lower today and came right into a couple of different areas. And this is again right out of the course. We came into a double bottom area. We didn't reach the 200 period moving average, but there's a reason why I think we didn't. One is because from this pivot low to the pivot highs up here, this was a normal garden variety retracement as well as this double bottom area and the market stopped short and reversed on a dime. 
putting in a tail candle. Now, you guys know that I don't love tail candles found in the middle of a range. Tail candles are much more effective when at lows or highs on charts, at least from a short-term perspective, right? Like if a tail candle is found in an area like this, it may not be the low, but certainly it was an interim, would have been an interim low. Or if a tail candle was found here, that's a different story than one found in the middle of a range. So I don't put a lot of stock in the tail candles found in the middle of a range. However, we did finish below the moving averages today. All of the moving averages except the 200. So we're below the 20, the 100, and the 50 period moving average. So that's a short-term negative. However, we still could be poised for higher prices if we don't get below and close below this area here, including the 200 period moving average. If we close below this general zone here, then we're going to come back down a double bottom and potentially lower. If this holds and we get above these moving averages and start up again, then this would have been a normal garden variety pullback and we may go back and I think we, we still have a good chance to go back to this double top area. Doesn't have to happen tomorrow, doesn't have to happen even in the month of December. But I think before the bond market ends up playing out the longer term bearish pattern that we've been discussing, I think they do take another run for that red candle high on the monthly chart one more time. And looking at the dollar, we remain below the moving averages. Now the dollar is really putting in a bearish pattern. Over the last few days, we've just gone sideways beneath the 100 period moving average. And the more that this occurs and the more time that it takes to get above, if we can at all get above and close above, at least the first step is the 100 period moving average, then this is a bearish pattern if we can't close above that level and this will likely play out to the downside. That's the way markets work. Right now, the dollar is making a bearish pattern that's poised and the probabilities are for lower prices coming. And with that, it's everything I wanted to and intended to discuss tonight, so I'll give it a wrap there. I'm David Frost, My Strategic Forecast, Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.